What we're going to be looking at here is the declining balance depreciation method. And we're just going to be going through a typical example here to determine the depreciation on a yearly basis here using this declining balance method. So let's go down and first look at what our problem is here. Uh, we have, have purchased our equipment here. We have a purchase cost of $304,000 on it. And a service life is eight years. And the estimated salvage value is $16,000. And our date of purchase here is at 10 1 20x1. So we've got um, a partial period uh, that we have to determine here for our depreciation because we're uh, operating our company here on a fiscal period where it runs from January 1st to December 31st uh, each year here. And we made this interim purchase here. So we're going to have to account for depreciation uh, between periods here. So the first thing we are go is let's go up here and look at uh, our table here that we'd have to uh, set up here to determine our depreciation here. So we have, uh, let's just look at a, uh, the book value here, the beginning of the year here. Now the point I want to make here, when we're using this declining balance method here, you see this uh, year one here, this beginning balance of $304,000. Well, that's what we start with here. Now let's make a point of it here. Uh, using the declining balance method, it does not deduct the salvage value in computing the depreciation base. So you don't uh, subtract any salvage value in it. Remember we had estimated salvage value of $16,000. Well that isn't subtracted. We just start out with our purchase cost here of $304,000. And we take it times the rate here of our declining balance. Well, that's what we're going to look at and how we calculate that here. So let's go down and look at that. Now, uh, first off here, when you're utilizing or we're using the declining balance method here, it utilizes a depreciation rate as a percentage here, which is some multiple of the straight line method. So let's go and look at that here. So, and our example here is uh, we're going to use as a double declining rate here for an eight year asset life. So the first thing for our straight line rate here, well, uh, it's just uh, to determine that here, one divided into the eight year life here gives us 12.5% per year. Now, for our, in this case, we're going to call it a double declining rate. So we're going to take two times um, the straight line rate here of 12.5% and we're going to come up with our uh, declining rate here of 25%. So that's why we call it a double declining rate here. So now let's go up and look at how we'd make our calculations here. So we determine our rate here to be 25%. Uh, we take that times the beginning of the year here carrying value of our uh, cost here that we're depreciating. In this case, it was the cost here of $304,000 times our 25% gives us a depreciation expense for the year here of $76,000. So now all we have to do is determine our uh, book value at the end of the year. It's simply a depreciation expense here uh, for the year less the beginning carrying value. In this case, it's $228,000. Now, what we're going to do here is that the beginning book value here at the beginning of the year becomes the book value here at the beginning of the next year. The end of year one becomes our uh, carrying value here at the beginning of year two. So in this case, it's 228000 Again, times our 25% here gives them, gives us depreciation expense here for the year of 57000 And then just subtracting our 57000 from 228000 here, we're going to come up with our new book value. Now, we just continue on doing this process here. The, uh, the rate here times the beginning balance gives us our depreciation expense for the year. And then we proceed on through here. And you'll notice here at the end of our eighth year here, we have $30,434. Now, that's still sitting, that's undepreciated, there's no, it hasn't been depreciating, depreciated. We estimated our salvage value to be 16000 but we ended up with $30,434. So, uh, that's our new estimated salvage value here. And you'd have to, can use some various methods here, like uh, switching to a straight line method here to uh, utilize or use up all this depreciation the remaining amount here of 30, that remaining amount here of $30,000. And then I uh, make a point here uh, with this uh, declining balance method, you can see the decreasing depreciation charge decreases here as we move up and our move down, our move on in our years here. Okay, now let's go look at uh, the second uh, step here we have to do here. And this is for our partial period depreciation. Now remember, we purchased this uh, equipment here on 10 1 
20x1. So we have to account for the depreciation here. Uh, what we're going to do here is when, since we're going to be using this uh, declining balance here, we're going to be looking at, we got our physical, fiscal year runs from January through December, but on this piece of equipment here, our depreciation here, it's going to run from 10-1-20x1 uh, through 10-1-20x2 and then so on. We're always going to be going to this uh, October 1st date here. So 10-1-20x2, uh, we're going to be looking at 10-1-20x3 for our depreciation here. So this is why we call it a partial period depreciation. And what we have to do is we have to prorate the depreciation expense between the periods. So just simply doing it this way. So our 10, our 10 uh, for the first year here at 20x1, our 10 one or 10 one well you got October November and December so you got three months here divided by 12 months for the year so you're going to get 25 percent here uh, accounted for for 20x1 here the three months and then the remaining amount here would be nine months or nine twelfths would be 75 percent and that's going to be what we recognize here in 20x2 so what I've done here is I've just laid this out here um, in table form here and it's easy to follow it this way so our depreciation expense here now let's look at it that's the full year depreciation depreciation based on the first day of the fiscal year here at 1 1 so we take our fiscal year here remember we calculated that depreciation expense for year one here to be seventy six thousand dollars so to assign our our, for 20x1, all we do is take our 25% here times the depreciation um, for the year here of 76000 and we're going to come up with $19,000. So that's for 20x1, October through December here. Now for 20x2, we're going to be looking at the um, January through uh, October here uh, for uh, that period here, which is nine months or 75%. So we take 75% times our depreciation expense for the year here uh, of $76,000 and we're going to come up with $57,000. Now we just proceed on through in the same fashion since our um, partial depreciation period here runs from 10-1 of each week, starts at 10-1 of each year. So for 20x2, our depreciation expense for the year is 57,000. So we just take 25,000 times, 25% times of 57,000. We're going to come up with 14,250. And we just, for 20x3, again, this, we just 75% times the depreciation expense of 57, 75% times 57,000 comes up at 42,750. So you can see the pattern that we're going here, how we're uh, part, our, our prorating our depreciation between years since we're running it here from 10 1 uh, between them, October 1st of each year. So, okay, you can see the pattern here. You see how you do it. So, to determine our depreciation expense here for each year here, uh, you just sum your total amounts here. So for 20x1 we had that $19,000 here and then for 20x2 you're going to get uh, 71250 here and for 20x3 uh, you just sum your amounts here and you're going to get $53,437. So table here works handy and it adds some logic here when you're trying to a, a part a portion out your depreciation expense between periods. So that's this is an Okay, enough said here. You can see what we've done here. We had our depreciation. This was the fiscal year depreciation for each year here, and then we converted it over here, a partial, it parsed it out here for a partial period depreciation, simply by determining the amount of depreciation here at the beginning of our first period here, that m amount for that year here based on a percentage, and then for the following portion of that entire year here, we determine the next uh, portion or the percentage here and then we were able to allot it out so let's just go back one more time here and look at our declining balance method here again so remember the key point is here uh, our depreciation base here we start out with our purchase cost of the equipment here we don't subtract out any um, salvage value when we're using the declining balance method and then for our, our rate here well that has to be determined based on the straight line percentage in this case let's say it's 
eight years here, we determine it would be 12.5%. And we use the double declining rate, or two times that. That can change here. You might have a different rate here, and you're going to come up with a different percent. But nonetheless here, once you determine your percentage here, you just take a times your carrying value here, and you determine your depreciation expense, and you just proceed on down here. But you can see when you end up here with your your in the estimate at the end you still have some amount here to depreciate so that you have to take care of here uh, because you don't depreciate your entire amount here using this declining balance method so okay just summary overview here and how you would use this declining balance here depreciation method